In the last few videos, I've been focused on controlling motors from the Raspberry Pi Pico. It's now time to remote DDD to a true ROS2 robot and use MicroRos to connect it to the ROS2 ecosystem of nodes. This will help me as it gives me a lot of reusable components as well as tools to visualize my robot and remotely control it. I've gone through the same process for the video turntable as a very simple robot. A lot of the code I use for that project is going to get reused here, along with my experience of using MicroRos under FreeRTOS on the Pico and the two Pico standard IO channels. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Just a quick recap on DDD. DDD is a three-wheeled robot for the purposes of experimentation with robotics and ROS2 using the Pico and Raspberry Pi. DDD is driven by two 12-volt motors on the front two wheels. A dual H-bridge drives the motors and rotary encoders measure the speed. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay are a great partner for any maker, able to manufacture PCB boards, undertake 3D printing or CNC builds, as well as sheet metal fabrication and injection molding. The service is required for any droid building project. PCBWay also hosts pages on makers projects, so why not check out what other makers are building? I've looked previously at connecting a Raspberry Pi Pico to the ROS2 ecosystem using MicroRos, and I did a set of videos on that, including adding FreeRTOS into the stack so that we can have true concurrency, and being able to publish and subscribe to messages from the Pico into the ROS2 ecosystem. All of that was demonstrated on the video turntable, a really simple robot, and that is exactly the journey that we're now gonna take DDD on adding in MicroRos capability and to the firmware running on the Pico and connected across to the Raspberry Pi that I'm going to also put on DDD, which is going to be running most of the other ROS2 tools and will be eventually doing things like navigation. The focus of today's experiment is to be able to publish the joint state for DDD. Its joints are really those two big motors on the front of uh, DDD. And so we're gonna publish their rotational speed and their position within 360 degrees or two pi radians of rotation. Joint state we looked at on the video turntable as well. And it's a simple message that just contains the header, which has got some timing information, a array of uh, names of the joints, an array of positions of those joints that we used certainly within the video turntable. And it also has an array of velocity, which we're going to use this time, which we didn't use previously on the video turntable, and effort, which I'm not gonna bother with and ignore. So for our joints, we're going to publish uh, information about two motors, motor zero and motor one. And we're gonna give their position in radians between minus pi and plus pi, and we're gonna give their velocity in radians per second. And I'm gonna use that to drive a small URDF model. It's really simple. I've got almost nothing in it apart from the motors uh, or the wheels and a little bit of chassis to attach them to. To be able to really just see, am I publishing the right things? Are the motors actually going the way round? I think they're going and to just try to make sure that the ROS2 model and ecosystem of our robot is the same as the real world. So that's the purpose of using URDF in this model. I'm gonna to then to be able to sort of track it as we get into the navigation world. But for now, I just want to make sure the simple stuff is working okay. I've placed all of the code for today's experiment into the repo DTD EXP DDD experiments and we're in project for ROS2. This is really all about um, building on the PID experiment and just bringing in the world of uh, ROS and micro ROS bridge uh, to that experiment so that we can just start publishing that joint message. To do that, I'm gonna need FreeRTOS and to create a, a nice uh, ecosystem, but this is all very similar to what we did on the video turntable. 
So I'm going to use the same concept of my micro ROS bridge task that I was running uh, within that video turntable and that same code. And then I'm going to create a motor agent, which is going to be a free our task task looking after our motors and the controlling and running of, of the PID algorithm. So that motor agent is going to control and set up all of those ROS2 nodes via the create entities call. And then it's going to destroy them should uh, we lose comms to the uh, micro ROS world. Then it's going to publish out our joint message out over to micro ROS. Micro ROS bridge is going to hold that in a queue and publish it as it's got time within its uh, cycle. And it will let the motor agent know that it's actually completed the publication. That we're not going to be too worried about that. Over in VS Code, I've got the DDD EXP repo open and we're looking at the for ROS2 project. And in this project, I've actually got two parts because we've got the firmware, which is the Pico side of this and the code we're going to be running on the Pico. But we've also got a ROS2 workspace. And that ROS2 workspace includes our um, URDF description of, um, there it is, of DDD. It's pretty simple, as I was talking about earlier. And we've also got in there um, some launch code so that we can launch um, a display-only environment where we can see an RVIS version of um, the URDF being, brought, uh, being shown and the joint message coming and affecting those wheels. So that's what um, I've set up in the ROS2 workspace. The firmware really is what I want to talk about and that's where the real work is. Now this is a little bit more complicated than the PID version because we've now got free RTOS involved and micro ROS, which means that I've got a port folder here with um, free RTOS kernel port code to make free RTOS run nicely on my Pico. And um, we've also got, you know, um, if we have a look at the make file here, we're also including, so there's the free RTOS configuration and we're also including um, some micro ROS library code as well. Um, my library folder I've put at the very top of this repo, uh, which is why we've got these slightly um, unusual um, set path directions here with um, two sets of double dots in it, just so that I, I can share the libraries across all of my experiments. So in order to get our micro ROS bridge working and all of the micro ROS library code running, I've got a few other little pieces uh, added into this um, project. So we've got uh, free RTOS allocators to tell micro ROS how to allocate um, memory using free RTOS. We've got a uh, Pico USB transport because we're going to use USB to connect via uh, to the micro ROS and into the ROS uh, ecosystem via our Raspberry Pi. Um, which means that um, you know all my telemetry and anything I'm doing printf sort of things, that's all going to be coming out of UART. And then we've got the micro ROS bridge classes I wrote and used with the video turntable. And uh, the entities, which is what we're going to extend from in order to actually publish and subscribe to things within the ROS2 ecosystem on our Pico side. Our new code this time is really the motor agent. And motor agent is really taking the functions that we did last time largely in main. It is managing uh, the motors, creating the motors, managing the motors, and running that PID algorithm. As well as being a micro ROS entities, so it's the center of our world that is going to be able to publish those joint messages this time. So we're in, um, extending from both agent, because this is a free RTOS task, and we're, I'm extending from micro ROS entities as well, because I want to actually create all of my publication entities in here. So we've got some functions here for working with the motors. So adding the motors, getting a motors by the index on that motor, um, configuring their PID, configuring all their PIDs in one go so that they're all the same, setting their speeds in radians per second, and then we get down to the micro ROS uh, functions to actually set up the entities, uh, destroy the entities, 
and uh, a few counts that are needed. Really though, what I'm going to talk about largely is in these two methods down here, which are the, uh, really about creating that joint state message and publishing that joint state message. So let's have a look at the C++ code for this then. So most manager that you hear is really, you know, got all our motor control stuff, um, allowing us to add motors, which is basically just creating uh, new entities of those motor PIDs classes we saw last time. Configuring PID, um, that's just giving the, the PID, the, the, um, or giving the motor those PID control parameters. Uh, configuring them all, well, actually I'm just applying it to all of the motors I've got in the list. And setting the speeds again, it's just passing that on to the motors to set their speeds. And then our run method really is just running and managing that do PID. So every 200 milliseconds we're going to, or roughly that, we're going to be running the do PID algorithm and adjusting the throttle speed. Um, and we're also then going to be publishing our joint state. So let's have a look at uh, those two important methods of actually setting up that message and publishing it. Well, actually, before I do that quickly, we'll just talk about the create entities here because we're going straight past it. So this is where we're setting up our publisher and we're just setting up a single publisher that's going to be publishing joint state. And it's going to go to the uh, topic joint states. Initializing the joint state. Um, this is very similar to what we did on video turntable again, but actually it, it's a slightly painful message to set up. There's quite a little bit of uh, bullet point work here. Why we create um, a array for our position sequence and an array for our position uh, velocity. And of course, another array for the names. And I'm populating that name here with the motor and the index of that motor. Um, to give them all a name. Once we've got all that nicely set up, then every time around the loop, we can reuse that same message and publish a new state. So that published joint state, what's it doing? Well, it's first of all, it's setting up that header so that we've got timestamp in the header. It's then going to uh, populate the position and velocity of each of the motors. And we're just asking the motors what their current radian position is and what their average radians per second speed is and populating that data. Nice and, and simple, really. And then we can ask the Microsoft Bridge to publish this message for us. So let's finally have a look at main and just confirm what main is doing for us. Um, so our, our main boot task is really setting up our motor agent, which are called motors here. It's adding the two motors in, giving the constants around um, which GPIO channels they're using. It's configuring PID, and it's configuring PID consistently across both those two motors. And um, it's then passing, um, it's then setting up the MicroRAS bridge and passing across motors as the entities manager into MicroRAS bridge. And that's largely it for setup. And then for test purposes, I've just got a little loop here that's just adjusting the speed of those motors slowly over time. So they do 10 seconds at uh, each, um, each speed as they go from uh, one revolution, well, one radian per second up till um, six radians per second. So that's it. That's, that allows us to then, you know, have a look at this as a demo. So here we've got the demo. We've got DDD running with those motors rotating, and we've got an RVIS screen there showing uh, hopefully the same thing that the motors are doing. It's actually quite difficult to line both of these videos up to be perfectly in sync, um, but I think they're, they're largely there. Uh, might be out a little bit, but um, you get the idea. We, can, we are seeing them go the, the same way around. They are, do seem to be working, so all good stuff. So I've promoted DDD to the world of ROS2 and it's messaging well and everything seems to be working very well. We can now look at arranging external control for DDD through ROS2 messaging. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video as it helps others find it. 
please subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.